you, you really are adorable. Yes, I am, aren't I? <laughs> I love it. You got the little beetle haircut and the suit. Look, he's even got little beetle boots. Is that cute or what? <laughs> Speaking of little boots, did you hear about that lady that gave birth to eight babies? Yeah, they call her the Octomom. I wrote a song about it. <laughs> Had not put seeds in the Octomom's garden that day. I wish that she was not crazy. The Octomom's garden should be slain. Eight babies. She doesn't have a uterus, she has a slip and slide. I'm sure you heard about those pirates in Somalia. Yeah, I did. Yeah, they kidnapped, they kidnapped one of our captains, but, but the Navy SEALs took care of that. Yeah. I wrote the song about it. You're telling us you were in the Beatles? Of course I was. I even co-wrote most of the songs. It's right there in the credits. Written by Lennon, Hyphen, McCartney. I'm Hyphen. <laughs> so what happened? They kicked me out. I wrote a song about it. I remember it like it was. Yesterday. In case you're new to the show, we are the Texas The Band Show. We are from Dallas, Texas. Now, throughout the evening, you will be experiencing various special guests. And our first, and I should say most important, special guest is about to make an appearance for us right now. And our bass player, Bill, is going to give him an official introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my privilege to introduce to you one of the legends of country and western music, a man who at one time was known the entire world over as the yodeling hobo. Now he's been out with such women as Tanya Tucker, Dolly Parton, Loretta Lynn, Trisha Yearwood, Shania Twain, Faith Hill, that's the name of a few of the thousands. Put your hands together, welcome to the stage, the only man to sell more records than Boxcar Willie and Slim Whitman, Mr. Walter T. Airedale. Ladies and gentlemen, I tell you what, it's just great to be here. Now, Walter, we want to thank you for coming out here all the way from Nashville, Tennessee, just to be with us. But there, like I was saying, it's great to be here. Now, have you, uh, have you decided what song to do for us? Oh, oh, yes. Oh, yes, I have. 
I have decided the song I want to do. And right now, I'm going to tell all these good-looking folks just how I came up that deciding on this particular song. <laughs> okay, so now, so how, how did you decide on this particular song? Well, Terry, you know, I've been out here all day at the fair. I know, you've been wandering around. Yes, I have. And right out here today, during your opening medley, in fact, I saw me the woman of my dreams. You did? Yeah, okay. And, uh, and you just, what, were you like peeking behind the curtain? I certainly was peeking behind the curtain. And I seen you go over there and, and sing to her. Which one was it? I sang to about three ladies, uh, three or four ladies. It was that one sitting there on the second row over here to the, to the side. The one right here? Yeah. Oh, man, what's your name? If you can yell your name out real loud for me. Roberta. Oh, Roberta, honey, I love you. <laughs> okay, so... So now you want to do something special for Roberta. Yeah, because you see, there's something that I can just tell by looking at Roberta. There's something I can tell about her. Oh, really? And what is it that you can tell about her? The one thing that really turns her on. Oh. Is real honest God cowboy yodeling. I ain't all right about that, Roberta. You like cowboy yodeling, honey? I knew she would. Okay, so, so you're going to yodel for Roberta? Yes, I am. Okay, well, why don't you go ahead and do that? Give that note there, son. Roberta, honey, get ready to get turned on. Now, old Sky Ball Paint was a devil saint, and his eyes were a fiery red. Good men have tried this horse to ride, but shucks, all of them are dead. Now, I won't brag before I rode that nagle and blood against the boil. Then I hit the ground and ate three pounds of good old Texas salt. Singing high home with the tie on, right on the pine, then you go, sons of the western zone. Singing high home with the tie on, right on the pine, then you go, sons of the western zone. <laughs> Walter, what's wrong? Jerry, I don't think Roberta's turned on enough yet. <laughs> well, Walter, how in the world can you tell she's sitting way out there? You're up here on stage. I don't see no motel key on stage yet. Okay, now wait a second. Now hang on. Now, now hang on. All right, now Walter, let's suppose you're right. I am right. Okay, you're right. What do you think would What do you think would help turn Roberta on more? I think that is some real fast yodeling. What do you say, folks? Fast yodeling? No, 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 no. Do not, do not cheer for that. What's wrong? Well, listen, Walter, I'm sure you're right. I'm sure if you did some really, really fast yodeling, it would turn Roberta on more. I know it would. The only problem is what the problem is that um, I am so sorry, Roberta. I know you'd like to hear Walter yodel faster, but I. I don't think I can yodel any faster than that. <laughs> All right, stop the music. Stop the music? What the Sam Hill did you just sing? Well, Walter, I, I, was just, I was just explaining to Roberta that I know that she would really like to hear you yodel faster, but I... I I'm so sorry, I don't think I can yodel any faster than that. Then you just stand there, I'll do all the yodeling. <laughs> now, now, hang on, wait a minute, wait a minute. Walter just doesn't work like that. What do you mean it don't work like that? Look, I don't want to get into this in front of all these people. Get into what? Walter, you know it, I know it, all these people here tonight know it. No, what? Okay, okay, fine, fine. The fact that I'm the one that's making you talk. Walter, it's true. I am Terry said if you think you're making me talk, then why the hell are you standing up here arguing with yourself? Uh, Hit it, boys. <laughs> Faster! Faster! Somebody better hold on to a 
Carter, she's gonna get out of control here in a second. Get down on the edge, she's ready, and bottle, share a chill. Or who's gonna hold on, get the girl, so they take the hill. Both funny places, they hit lands, it's got all to their chair. Not at little, this is got all the children along you there. Singing hi ho, now, or out of mind, then you go, sons of the western zone. Singing hi ho, now, or out of mind, then you go, sons of the western zone. when I do that, don't you, Alberta? <laughs> Alberta, honey, I'm gonna do one more quick little yodel just for you. Then I want you to meet me backstage. And you're gonna find out that love is a many splintered thing. Splintered? Ow! Yep, love. Thank you so much, thank you. Mr. Walter T. Airedale, give him some love! Harry Fader is with us. He's a ventriloquist, impressionist, comedian, and singer. In fact, he does more than a hundred impressions and celebrity voices. A skill which saw him win season two of America's Got Talent. And now he brings his hilarious show to the Mirage Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas. He's with us tonight Joined by a few of his favorite co-stars. Terry, it's yours. a guy who claims to be the best Elvis impersonator in the world. His name is Maynard Tompkins. Right. Now, Maynard, uh, you, you told me earlier that you are the best Elvis impersonator in the world. That's right. It, 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 I, I, I could, um, it, um, it, yes, I am. Okay, so, so what Elvis songs do you know? Actually, I, I, don't, I don't know any Elvis songs at all. You don't know any Elvis songs? No. I do know a Christmas song, though. You want to hear it? Yeah, I guess so. Okay. I'll have a blue Christmas without you. I'll be so blue just thinking about you. Decorations of the red On a green Christmas tree Won't mean a thing, dear If you're not here with me I'm in the blue Snowflakes start calling and when those blue memories start calling You'll be doomed to 
doing all right with your Christmas of wine. But I heard I have a blue, 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 blue Christmas. I actually made it that was the Yes, I am the best person impersonator. I guess you are, Maynard Tompkins. We're back with the incredible Terry Fader, the ventriloquist, the more than 100 voices he's at the Mirage. He's here with uh, one of his characters, Emma. Now, how did Emma learn to sing like that? How did you learn to do that? A lot of practicing in the shower. Yeah, I want to be the next Taylor Swift. <laughs> the next Taylor Swift? <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Good luck. Yeah. We'll bring Maynard back up in a minute, but how did you, how did you come to do this? You, Terry. You know, um, I started, when we were kids, I started when I was uh, 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 10 years old doing ventriloquism. My parents had a janitorial business, and when we were emptying trashes and, and vacuuming floors and doing all that, I decided that uh, it was a good time to practice ventriloquism. So I would listen to the radio, and I would sing to the radio, to songs, you know, the popular songs, but I would do it without moving my lips. I remember those days. You're not even that old. I'm not? Okay. Then I don't. He does. She doesn't. <laughs> but, but why 10 years? Do you remember why at 10 you wanted to do voices without moving lips? I mean, well, it's a strange I started, occupation. I started uh, doing magic when I was 8, and I thought magician, being a magician was kind of cool. But, uh, but when I was 10, I decided that, uh, that it was... Um, Ventriloquism was totally unique and different. I, found a, I accidentally found a book in my school library on how to do ventriloquism. And uh, uh, you, you're interested? Oh, yeah. I've never heard this story. Okay. <laughs> so but, uh, started to, so I, I, I checked the book out. I started practicing with it. I found a little puppet at Sears. I think it was $20. My mom paid for half, and I paid for the other half. And, and, uh, and then I started doing little shows for kids in the, in the uh, around my my school and my church and and things like that and uh, decided when I was about 13 or 14 that I wanted to be uh, one of the top ventriloquists and uh, you that know was we, a goal it was a goal yeah when I, I think when I was 15 I decided I want to be I want to be known as one of the the great ventriloquists um, who's your favorite ventriloquist uh, Edgar Bergen without a doubt I mean we all uh, um, but those he moved of us his lips a lot there, except Charlie McCarthy was funny <laughs> that's right well it was all about character and everything and of course to become as as uh, a household name like Edgar Bergen did and, and Charlie McCarthy did that was kind of the goal but uh, of course Paul Winchell and Sherry Lewis and Jimmy Nelson and, and these guys were big influences on me as well and I just decided when I was about 15 or 16 that when people s thought of ventriloquism I wanted them to put my name up there with the Edgar Bergens and the Paul Winchells and the uh, Jimmy Nelsons and America's Got Talent of course made it for you right absolutely you've been knocking around how many years uh, 20 something years I mean I, I was in my 40s um, what was Where funny were you about appearing it? in clubs? I, no, I was doing uh, fairs, festivals, uh, little small town stuff. In fact, what was funny about it was, was since I was a ventriloquist, they always looked at me as a kid's act. So they would put me next to the petting zoo or put me in with a bunch <laughs> of clowns. And it was the, always the worst stage in the entire fair. It was terrible. And then I started playing schools and I would play a lot of elementary schools. Um, when, I, when I got close to about 40 years old, I thought to myself... You know, I guess I guess the whole thing of being rich and famous is 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 a is a pipe dream because nobody's ever really care about a forty year old ventriloquist. And then America's Got Talent came along and changed everything. You had an audition for that, right? I did. Yes, just like everybody else. I'm gonna. Here, you want to sit down? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we'll put her down. Um, but yeah, just like everybody else, I went and stood in line and uh, with a, a bag full of hopes and dreams and hoping that that something would happen. What I thought would happen was that I would get on America's Got Talent. I would. Um, get on two or three episodes uh, and then it would raise my um, the people's awareness of, of what I do. I never in a million years thought I would win it. I thought there was no chance in anything that a ventriloquist could win America's Got Talent. I just said not gonna happen but my goal was to get on and and do things that would make people say you know, I want to see what he's going to do next week. So I opened with, uh, with uh, at last, uh, Etta James, because I thought that was kind of unusual to be able to sing a guy singing Etta James without moving his lips. And then, and then I had this whole plan. I was going to do Tony Bennett. I was going to do um, Dean Martin. I was going to do uh, some of the other ones, uh, Louis Armstrong, Kermit the Frog. And so I had all these plans, and I thought, if I can just get people to go to their phones and say, I want to see what he's going to do next week, and, and dial the phones and, and vote for me. It did work. And what won it for you? 
Um, Winston the impersonating turtle singing, crying, uh, as Roy Orbison. <laughs> Did you expect to win when you got to that point? You know, um, I didn't. I didn't. And the main reason was because the, the guy who came in second was a guy named Cass Haley, a really great uh, reggae singer. And I was looking at YouTube. And I, I, would, I would see my um, YouTube stuff only had like 100,000 hits. And his had over a million. So I'm thinking, this guy is going to run away with it. There's no way I'm going to win it. But I was happy. I was like, I'm going to get up. I might get second, you know. But I felt like that I had done a million dollar performance and I felt like I had done yeah, a winning performance. Is Maynard down there? Yeah, yeah. You want to talk to Maynard? Here's you Maynard. You can put your voice down there, can you? I can. Yeah. Hey, can you throw your voice? I can. Uh, how you do it? Okay, watch. I'll, I'll do an echo. <clears throat> ladies, ladies, and, and gentlemen, gentlemen. How do you do that? <laughs> I have no idea. Here. Let's set Maynard right here. Larry, is that Larry King? That is Larry King. I cannot believe it. How did you come up with who designs the puppets? This little guy. I'm not making um, fun of you, Maynard, but you're a puppet. No, that's okay. That's okay. You know, I, don't take it. I'm personal. not an atheist. I know somebody designed me. <laughs> 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 anyway, um, I don't even know what that means. I don't know, but it was funny. <laughs> it was, no, um, uh, this guy was, was a guy that I, uh, many, many years ago, probably uh, 15, 20 years ago, I decided I wanted to have an Elvis impersonator in the show. Uh, I could do an Elvis voice, and um, so I called up uh, uh, a guy, uh, Clinton Detweiler is a guy in, uh, in Colorado. Detweiler. Yes, he's, he's kind of, the, he's kind of the, the uber ventriloquist. All ventriloquists know who Clinton Detweiler is. He, ha he was the guy who ran uh, Mayher Ventriloquist Studios for years and years and years. And, and I called him puppets. up. He makes puppets. He makes puppets, yes. So I called him and I said, I, I need this Elvis uh, puppet. And uh, he, he had this guy, and, he, and I bought this guy from him. <laughs> and then after a America's Got Talent and everything kind of took off, uh, I found out that I had to like own the rights to every single puppet. And I had this guy and I had just bought him from, from Clinton. So I, I called him up and I said, what do I do about this puppet? And he said, well, luckily he's the only one I've ever sold. <laughs> and so I actually bought the rights from, from, uh, from Clinton. Uh, oh, it wasn't Clinton. It was, uh, there was another guy up in, uh, uh, I can't remember his name. Uh, anyway, it was another guy, but, but, um, so you own this. Yeah, I own him. Yes. Yes. Yeah. You feel like you're owned? Not at all. Because I have a lot of fun, and, 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 um, and that's all. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I got this idea that it would be funny to have an, imperson an Elvis impersonator that didn't know any Elvis songs. So uh, what he actually does in the show is uh, he, he sings an Aaron Neville song, and he thinks... He doesn't know that, you know, that it's Aaron Neville. Uh, Aaron Neville, so hard. You do Aaron Neville. I'm I am going to put you on the spot to do him now. I, I can if you want. Go do him a little. Because Aaron can, Neville I can. ain't easy. I, I can. Right, do Aaron Neville. Look at this face. I know the years are showing. <laughs> Look at this life. I still don't know where it's going. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know much. But I know I love you. <laughs> so he does that in the show, and it's and it, it uh, it's amazing. Are, you, are there some people you can't do? Uh, I'm sure there are. I mean, I, I'm I'm having a, a really difficult time with Frank Sinatra, but I, I'll get there. I'm I, I I just feel like if I work hard enough on something, I can, I can get there. But one of these days, I'll do Frank. But uh, and you also, of course, have a great voice yourself. You sing national anthem at Dodger Stadium. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're a singer in your own right. I, well, I, that's the thing is is I, I have a joke in the show where I, I do a song and I say uh, uh, most people that have seen me on TV don't realize that I can sing, and it is true. It's funny because after the show, uh, I'll go out and sign autographs and talk to people and meet them and people will say you sang that song by yourself i didn't know you could sing and i'm like well i'm a ventriloquist and the, the puppets are singing but i guess i guess that means i'm doing a good job if they don't know i can sing i love that you've told me that you you never miss a performance right i have never missed a performance no not in 20 28 years i think so. you you work through laryngitis mm-hmm everything i have the best voice doctor in the world he, he lives in dallas texas uh and he is unbelievable his name is dr kirkham and he works with uh with uh mick jagger and axel rose and he and works with got, luciano Pavarotti. from america's got talent you got the mirage contract right? i did yes it's I 10 million a year for 10 years is that true um i'm not supposed to talk money so i i, I that's what i've heard <laughs> The amazing uh, Terry Fader. When we come back, we'll meet his lovely wife and how he nabbed her. I'll never forget one. Anyway. <laughs>
We'll be right back. Don't go back with the incredible Terry Fader. His new wife is with us as well, who's one of the features in the act. Thanks, Melissa. Well, we're joined right now by Terry Fader and Vicki the Cougar this morning. Right. Terry opening up at the Mirage this weekend, your first headline gig. I know it's exciting. Oh, it's so exciting. It's something I've waited for my whole life. I'm 43 years old, and uh -huh. when, you, uh, when you get to, uh, to a certain point in your career, you kind of think, Maybe it might be over and, and you'll never hit it. And right. uh, thanks to America's Got Talent, it all it all happened. Yeah, you won the show. That's <laughs> now, great. Now, Vicky's a little older, uh, but uh, with you, with this uh, opening up, you nervous? I mean, you're you're a big Las Vegas I, act. I'm not nervous. Yeah. No, I've been doing this a long time. I've been waiting for it. Uh, we've been doing some preview shows on uh, my stage at the Terry Fader Theater at the Mirage, and uh, I haven't uh, felt any nerves at all. It's just been excitement and, and fun. Just That's fun. great. You said you've been doing this, or since you were like 10 years old. 10 years old. Yes. So it's a lovely a long time coming. It's <laughs> yes. your turn, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Good for you. Well, let's talk a little bit about Vicky. I okay. told Dave she might have she might have her eye on him. <laughs> I don't know why, but oh, he's way too old for me. Oh, he is. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> really? What, what do you go for? Oh, you got to be at least twenty-one. Oh, really? Oh, at least twenty-one? Well, I think my limit is twenty-four. <laughs> yeah. That's She's forty-nine. Right. She likes the younger men. Uh, it's easy. I'm but, a cougar. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right, uh, Vicky, uh, you've got to share the stage with some other uh, other characters, right? You get along with everybody? Well, of course I do. There's men in the show, aren't there? <laughs> <laughs> yes, she does like the men. She does. But do, you, do they have to be young men? No, I'll take them anyway. Okay. <laughs> Well, there you go. So, so Vicky, I know, is one of the latest parts of yes. the show, the the most recent. And I hear Vicky that you sing some young, um, you know, some young female songs. Yes, sir. Like do. Pussycat Dolls yes. and even Amy Winehouse. Do you want to sing a little bit? Sure. Don't you wish your girlfriend was hot like me? Don't you wish your girlfriend was a freak like me? Don't you? <laughs> Ah, nice. nice. All right, yeah. Terry, how difficult is it? It's, it's one thing to be a ventriloquist and then another to be an impersonator at the same time and, and then blend those two together. Uh, well, for me, I started doing impressions when I was six. Uh, I started singing when I was three. I started doing ventriloquism when I was ten, and um, I was just able to, uh, to put the three together. I started doing uh, imp speaking impressions and ventriloquism when I was ten because I didn't have any other routines, but I, I knew some... Uh, comedy like some Bill Cosby and some other things and so my puppets would do impressions of Bill Cosby because that's the only routines I knew right. when I was right. 10 and um, and then I started singing with the puppets uh, right away when I was uh, 12 or 13 uh, in church and things like that and uh, it was just sort of a something that morphed into what I do now mm -hmm. where I, f I focus on the, the, the puppets doing impressions. So. All right. Well, we've loved having you on the show, and we wish you the best of luck this weekend. We've Thank been giving you. away tickets all week to your show. All right. And uh, good luck with everything. Thank you. Vicki, you ready? You ready for this weekend? Oh, I can hardly wait. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. Now pace yourself. <laughs> pace yourself. <laughs> yeah, be right. here, Terry. Good Thank luck. You. We'll Thank be back you. after this. There it is, Terry Fader. You got a hundred million now. It has been truly the American dream. Terry, good morning. Congratulations. Please welcome the winner of America's Got Talent, Terry Fader. Wow. Just having the time of my life. Suddenly, I was booked in Las Vegas as a major headliner. We've got billboards. I'm on taxi cabs. I'm on the marquee out in front of the Hilton. My life completely changed forever. This is great. And nobody knows what a show in Las Vegas means more than tonight's special guest. Just 12 months ago, he was standing right here. Today, he's one of the biggest stars in Vegas. And tonight, he's back performing for you once more on the stage where it all began. He's your winner, your star. It's Terry Fader! So Winston, Winston, what, what would you like to do for us tonight? I'd like to do this with Laura the Gaith or Sherry because she's cute. My apologies to Ozzy. Go ahead, start it. I didn't really try, Kind of hold back the deal for so long. And did you feel like I 
Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. You are, you're the judge. You, you, you can't even shake my hand, can you? You're the best. Thank you. Uh, okay, so how has your life changed in the last year? Unbelievable. Uh, I'm now the, the main headliner uh, starting in February at the Mirage Casino, uh, February the 14th, my opening. So it's been fantastic. It's changed in, in every good way possible. It really has. Okay, now, and God bless you. I hope it continues for a long, long time for you. The contestants are waiting backstage. There are 20 of them. They're going to be narrowed down to 10. You were there. You know what they're feeling like. What is it? Scared. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, they're probably, um, they're, um, I bet they're, I bet they're, um, scared. <laughs> they're, they're, they're scared. And to think that you made all this money without even opening your mouth, that's unbelievable. <laughs> Okay, and I know you got a book coming out. I do, yes. yes. Uh, it's called Who's the Dummy Now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so good luck with that. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we, ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for Terry Fader. Thank you very much. <laughs> you have to tell us what happened backstage with my assistant. I had been to the mountains. <laughs> Did you actually learn how to sing like Elvis? <laughs> Are you kidding me? Well, since my baby left, I found out it was too much. It's trying to be in the loneliness too much.
Hi, everybody. Terry Fader and Lynched in the Impersonating Turtle here. Oh, we are so happy to announce that we have a brand new show with the Mirage. It's got uh, brand new songs, comedies, impersonations. Hey, at the same time, it features all the cast members you know and love. Yeah, except one. Wait, what do you mean except one? Okay, here's the show in a nutshell. I, I mean, a uh, turtle shell. I want to leave Terry and go to Hollywood to become a movie star. Yeah, yeah, right. Remember how things worked out last time when you wanted to uh, go out on the Vegas Strip and become a big star in Vegas? Yeah, yeah. W w what did you get out of that? Absolutely nothing. But this time, I'm ready to go for the big time. Want to see? Yeah, what are you talking about? Coming to theaters this summer... It's Gravity 2, starring Winston the Impersonating Turtle. In space, no one can hear a turtle scream. Especially when Terry Fader is still back on Earth. Rated PG. Puppet guidance suggested. So, if you want to find out how things work out, and if Winston is able to, uh, well, make it in Hollywood, or he comes back to me, you're just going to have to come to Vegas to see the show. Right, Winston? Winston? Winston! on stage and you dance around and you grab yourself, don't you? I do that sometimes, but I only do that when the music speaks to me. Well, don't let it speak to you while I'm up here, son. 
I ain't gonna have none of that grabbing yourself on my stage. <laughs> now let me get this straight. You want to sing a country song with me, is that right? Oh, that would, that would be the thrill of my life if I could. Well, I do. Let's go ahead and give this thing a shot. You start it out. Okay. Just checking. <laughs> what the heck? Who's that supposed to be? Well, that's, that's how I sing. Lord, have mercy. I can see a long hat teach you a thing or two about singing country music. Wait, you're, you're going to teach me about country music? Well, somebody's going to have to. I don't see nobody else around here blah, 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 looking like it had to be me. Oh, just to be taught by the legendary Walter Airedale. That's always been one of my fantasies. Oh, Lord, no. <laughs> help me, Robin, help me! <laughs> now, first of all, son, when you're singing country music, you got to quit doing all that sissy stuff, all that hey hoo hoo you got to sing it like a man. <laughs> now do that, son. going to have to put more into it. Okay. Now do it right, man. You're wasting our time. <laughs> this a tear in my face. Guy right here in the uh, third row, third guy over you in the uh, kind of bluish looking shirt. You are you are you enjoying the show tonight? That's that's wonderful to hear. I like that. It's, uh, isn't life funny? I mean, one minute you're out there enjoying the show, and the next minute you're in it. Come up here and help me. Give this guy a big hand as he uh, as he makes his way up here to the stage. But just so you know, it's a pretty simple job. I do most of the work here. Sir. All right, nice to meet you. What is your name, sir? Al. Al, it's nice. Where, where are you from, Al? I'm from Michigan. Michigan, all right. Well, thanks for coming all the way from Michigan. Uh, Al, are you married? Uh, yes. Is this your wife over here next to you? Yes. What's her name? Her name's Mary. What's that? Mary. Mary, thank you for sharing Al with us. We appreciate that. Now, now, um, uh, are you guys here for a special occasion? Or is it, are you just here for New Year's, or is there something else going on? Well, actually, we're here for, well, your show. My show, well, that's, I like to hear that. And we're seeing Sir Elvis tomorrow night because 35 years ago we saw him live at the Silver Dome. That's fantastic. Oh my goodness. Well, well thanks for coming to Vegas. On New Year's Eve. On New Year's Eve. Okay, well, that's exciting. Okay, well, now listen, Al, what's going to happen here is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn you into a puppet tonight, okay? Since you're married, you already know what this feels like. Um, <laughs> All I gotta do, Al, is turn around. Taylor's gonna outfit you in a mask. Now, this mask is going to allow me to take control of Al's ability to talk, something I'm sure Mary has not been able to do in, in all the years that she's been married to Al. Now, Al, uh, I mean, Mary, what? I'm gonna assume that you don't have one of these contraptions you're about to see on Al, so I'm gonna try to think of some things that you wanna hear him say to you. It's gonna be a good night for you, Mary. <laughs> Ask you some questions. I need you to answer me by nodding or shaking your head. No, you don't actually have to say anything. Um, first of all, Al, is this mask really comfortable? It sure is. Good. That's important. I, I don't want you to be uncomfortable. Uh, how are you doing tonight? Not too good. I cut myself shaving earlier. Well, now, what, Al? <laughs> Al, listen. Um, 
Do you have anything special? <laughs> do you have anything special you want to share with Mary before we get started tonight? Yes, I do. Okay. <laughs> what would you like to say to her? Mary honey, since we're in Vegas and uh, 35 years ago we saw Elvis. Yeah? Why don't you take my credit cards and go buy anything you want? That's very generous. She's out there celebrating, yeah. Uh, do you want to say anything else to Mary before we move on? You bet I do. Okay. Well, what's the other thing? I'd love to have your mom move in with us. Okay. Okay, Al. Um, Al, is there anything you want to share with this audience? Something that, uh, that nobody else knows, not even Mary? Uh, yeah, there is. Okay. What, what is that? Well, you know, there's something I've wanted ever since I was just a little bitty boy. What is that? I've always wanted to be Dolly Parton. Really? Yeah. <laughs> you know, Al? <laughs> you know, Al, uh, we can actually help you make that dream come true. If you did that, this would be the best New Year's ever. Well, <laughs> We're going to help make that happen. Now, in order to do that, Al, we're going to have to put a dress on you. Is that okay? You have no idea. Okay. You all want to see Al in a dress? All right, turn around, Al. <laughs> Al is actually talking under that mask. <laughs> you can't hear him, but I can. <laughs> I think I learned a few new cuss words tonight, but we're not going to... <laughs> get into that. Now, now every one of us has, that has seen Dolly uh, on stage knows that Dolly likes to wear very sparkly gowns when she uh, performs on stage. And I know the one that Al's about to be wearing is one of the, Oh, look at this. Oh. I feel pretty. You look really nice. You look good. You don't look like Dolly yet. I don't know. I think, you know what, I think a wig would make him look more like Dolly. What do you think, folks? Al? Would you like us to put a wig on you? <laughs> It just keeps getting better and better. <laughs> now this is my Rod Stewart wig, you say, so I'm gonna be, oh, that you look great. Wow. How's that, Al? Feels good to have hair again. Good. I'm glad that's, uh, I like that part. <laughs> so, Al, you know, <laughs> you know, you look really comfortable. Hey, why do this a lot when Mary's not home? Okay, well, you know, whatever, Al. So, Al, listen, um... You know, I, I feel like, darling, but something is missing. It is? Yeah. What, um, what do you think is missing, ladies and gentlemen? Oh, well, okay. Taylor, can you help us with that? <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, those are real. Okay, whatever. Well, Al, listen, uh... You know, Dolly Parton did a du duet with Rod Stewart, so I'll be Rod Stewart and I'll be Dolly. You started out. Okay. I really can't stay. Baby, it's cold outside. I've got to go away. Baby, it's cold outside. This evening has been so very nice. I hold your hands and just like I feel a little star. To it and started using your arms and dancing and really making a big deal out of this, this crowd's gonna go crazy. Let's try it and see if it happens. Here we go, Al. Ready? Let's do it.
wait, 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 wait. Something ain't right up here. <laughs> they told me I was supposed to come out here and sing a song with Michael Jordan. <laughs> I thought you'd be taller <laughs> and skinnier <laughs> and black. No, no, I'm not Michael Jordan. I'm Michael Jackson. Oh, Michael. J I just want to thank you, you know, you've, you've really inspired me to love country and western music with all my heart. Check, please. What did you say? In fact, I learned how to yodel because of you. Do, do you want to hear me yodel? Do we have to? Please? I didn't go ahead and yell. Okay. I'm a little nervous. Yeah, you're a little something. <laughs> <laughs> Lay hello, hello, hey, hello, hello, hey, hello, hello. Hey, hey. <laughs> 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 in touch with you. Do you tweet? <laughs> do what? You know, do you tweet? Well, yeah, sometimes after I had too much chili. No, no. <laughs> And speaking of that, did I see you grab yourself a minute ago? Yes, but I only do that when the music speaks to me. Well, don't let it speak to you then while I'm up here. <laughs> I ain't gonna have none of that cross grabbing on my stage. <laughs> now, if you want to sing a country song with me, is that right? Well, that would, that would be such a thrill if I could. Right, Dan, I guess I'm gonna have to teach you a thing or two about how to sing country music. <laughs> You're gonna teach me about country music? Well, somebody's gonna have to. I don't see nobody else around here with a lot of that I have to be me. Oh, just to be taught by the legend. <laughs> Walter Eardale. That's always been one of my fantasies. Oh, Lord, no! <laughs> help me, ladies, help me! <laughs> Now, first of all, son, when you're singing country music, you gotta quit doing all that sissy stuff, all that. <laughs> you sing like a man. You know, to do that, you're gonna have to put some cajones into it. You're always grabbing them, not putting them to good use. <laughs> Thank you. 